And President Pierre Nkorondzinza has given security forces one week to track down the killers of a top army general. Athanase Kararuza and his wife were killed on Monday as they were dropping their daughter off at school. The order comes one year since the crisis began in the country when President Kurunzinza announced his third term bid for power. The announcement sparked a protest across the country. Security forces responded with force. The African Union and international community condemned the violence and have called for Kurunzinza not to run. But elections were held and he won the controversial third term. Since then, hundreds of people have been killed. Let's now get you more on that. And CCTV's Jane Keo is joining me live from the capital, Bujumbura. Jane, an army general and his wife have been killed on Monday. It's coming up to one year since the unrest began in uh, Burundi. What's the latest coming out of Bujumbura? Well, Beatrice, as you can tell, the situation here still remains pretty much tense and perhaps what you can describe as far from normal. They will still have sporadic attacks that are going on, especially here in the capital. Like you mentioned there on Monday, we had that top army general, his wife and a bodyguard killed as they dropped off the army general's daughter at a high school here in Bujumbura. We understand the daughter sustained injuries in that attack. And on Sunday, we had a minister, a human rights minister, survivor grenade attack as he left church with his family. So with that, you can really tell that the situation here is still very much delicate. Now, the UN also says quarter of a million people, 250,000 people are still seeking refuge in neighboring countries and they fear that the numbers could rise if, the, if a solution is not found out, if a solution is not found, is not found soon. And add that to the 400 people who are said to have been killed. And of course, you have a grim, grim picture of what exactly is happening here in Bujumbura. A reason perhaps that the ICC has said it will be opening preliminary investigations into the violence here over the last one year. It says it will be uh, observing or looking at the evidence it has of torture, rape and forced detention to, to determine if it will open a full investigation into the situation here. Of course, authorities here have not responded to this latest statement by the ICC. Beatrice? Jane, uh, it's sporadic attacks there, targeted attacks as well. The ICC coming in. Uh, I mean, one year around, how worried are the residents of Bujumbura? Obitries. There's still a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty here, not just today, but over the last one year. In fact, early this morning, a security officials, that's the police and the military, did cordon off one of the hotspots of the violence. That's Musaga neighborhood in the south of the capital. We understand there was a search that was going on there. Uh, it went on for the better part of this morning, and so many people were not able to leave for their workplaces. And just speaking to the residents here, you kind of understand their worries. In fact, Beatrice, by 6 o'clock, the streets of Bujumbura are virtually empty and when you speak to the people here they will tell you that they don't want to get home when it's dark they tell you that a lot happens under the cover of darkness now speaking of today we haven't seen anything unusual in terms of a high security deployment save for a few roadblocks in several parts of the capital Beatrice well uh, Jen uh, how about uh, President Kurunzinza though what is he saying about all this how visible is he uh, in the public eye Well, he has been visible. He's been officiating several functions over the last few months. He's also been taking part uh, uh, in community work in several parts of the country with, uh, the re with the residents. Plus, yesterday he did issue that statement that you talked about uh, following that assassination of General Kararuza. He did condemn that attack and he also praised the general for his efforts, he, what he called his efforts against the coup plotters, last May coup plotters. Plus, he also said the general was deeply involved in strengthening the peace and security in the country during and after the general elections. Of course, General Kararuza was an advisor in the office of the vice president, plus a former deputy commander uh, in the UN mission in the Central African Republic, that's MINUSCA. And like you said, uh, President Pierre Nkurunzinza has also given security agents one week to find the killers of General Kararuza, Beatrice. All right, uh, Jane Keo for us there in, Bujum in Burundi's capital, Bujumbura. Thank you. We'll stay in Bujumbura now, and Burundi is one of the smallest countries in Africa, but it's been making some of the biggest headlines for the past year. Sonny Methu takes us through the highlights. 
Thanks, Beatrice. We can trace the troubles directly back to 26th of April 2015. That's when Pierre Nkurunziza officially declared he would run for a third term. Within hours, protests erupted and we started seeing the first fatalities. The troubles escalated in mid-May. Nkurunziza then traveled to Tanzania to discuss the crisis with regional leaders. While he was away, some army officers launched a coup attempt, but it quickly collapsed. While regional leaders struggled to mediate, Nkurunziza pushed ahead with the election. He won by a big margin, but no foreign head of state attended his inauguration. It happened a week earlier than planned for. The trouble simmered on until December, when at least 87 people were killed in Bunjubura, several army camps in the capital came under attack. The African Union had planned to send in 5,000 troops to quell the troubles, but it dropped that plan, following opposition from Nkurunziza. And just this past week, the UN Security Council approved a resolution to a UN police force into Burundi, but just 20 of them. That's all Nkurunziza will agree to.